Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. It's a new week, and we're continuing our study on uh, Daniel chapter 11, uh, finishing off uh, drawing out the line of Greece. So there's some loose ends we need to tie up. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have each morning to study your word, and we just invite your presence to be here now. Thank you for all the things you teach us for the past week and the studies that we have had, the things that we have learned that you have shown us. And we just ask, Lord, as we enter into a new week of morning studies, that um, we that you can guide us and that we can see things clearly. We pray for strength in our personal lives and the struggles that we face, the trials that you have given us, and uh, that we can cling to you Help the truths that we understand to strengthen our faith and trust in what you are doing in our lives. And we ask for your care and protection uh, for all those that we love and and, uh, are ministering to. Um, So be with us now through your spirit as we open your word together is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Well, good morning. Welcome, everyone. Now, um, we were. Looking at uh, last Thursday, we were saying we need to go back and look at this line a little bit. And I, I did a bit of study. I wouldn't say I did much. Um, but you can see I, I've added a few things here, and I'm, I'm not really sure about them. Now, when we go back and look at our document on Daniel chapter 11 that we were putting together, one of the things that we we had in there um dealing with this this end of this period is, of course, we had a lot more detail regarding this battle between the king of the north and the king of the south. And so, you know, here we have 9-11. We put 11-9 in there. We have January 6th. We're going to mark that as Raphia. And then we have this thing, Peneum, which is future. Now, when we had looked at the fifth Syrian war, so the fifth Syrian war would be that way mark where we have the question mark on our uh, line. So, so we would go to the fifth Syrian war. What we had was this civil war, uh, the first day of the first month in 2024 to the first day of the first month in 2030. It's a period of 2,187 days. So what, what we had was this 6256 plus 1992. That is in those times gave us this number. That goes from 9-11 to April 10th, 2024. So if we're going to put this in here, so what would make sense if we're going to be consistent is we would put here, let me copy this too. This would be that um, H6256 plus H1992. Whoops, what am I doing? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So this would be this the span of time, and this would bring us to April 10th, 2024. So that's the coming date. So so this would be marked as Paneum uh, or something. I don't know what we're really marking it as. Uh, but it, it should be Paneum, and that's the dates, that's the date that we get if we go from 9-11. So I'm not sure if that makes sense, because we're here we would be saying, well, Paneum is marked symbolically by April 10th, 2024. So that means we're not predicting Paneum on that date. We're just, we're saying that this period of time that's symbolized goes to this first day of the first month in, uh, 2024, which, you know, is not far away. I mean, we're looking at, uh, two months from now. And this was what, uh, 2187 days, right? So that's the reverse of 7812. Or wait, I think I did that wrong. I think it's 72872817. There we go. That would be correct because it was supposed to be the reverse. Okay. Any, any comments on this so far? So this is just us moving things around. You know, it says 2817. So 
I always thought it was the reverse, but it's just an iteration of it. Okay. So it should be 218. Oops. So I guess that's the 20th year, the 18th of July, if we wanted to read it that way. And any problems with this? Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. And so here's what I did. I put that um, in these times. I put it from 9-11. So it's going to go all the way from 9-11, not the 11-9 one, but from 9-11. And it's going to, um, I mean, we could move it back, you know, to here if we wanted to. We can just do it like that. But I'm going to keep it there. It's the second 9-11. And it brings us to April 10th, 2024. So the first day of the first month. And then to April 5th, 2030 is 2187 days. Any thoughts about this? Did you say 2817? It's 2187 days. 2817 days. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's 2187 days from, from the first day of the first month in 2024 to the first day of the first month in 2030. Yeah, that's correct. So, I mean, if we go back and look at the other document, just to, so we're saying that we're interpreting this part of this vision because we have the Battle of Paneum, right? If we go back, we're just going to read through um, starting in verse 11. And the king of the south, that's Ptolemy the fourth, atheistic communism, shall be moved with choler, raise a large army, governments of the world, and shall come forth and fight with him, continue the fourth steering war. So this is Paneum, right? And, and so there's this prop, uh, propaganda battle that goes on. Um, this issue, we just put it in there for, for simplicity's sake, the great reset idea that's happening at that time. Uh, this, all this wokeism, atheistic communism. Um, they're going to take away apostate Protestantism, right? So, and, and then his heart shall be lifted up and he shall cast down many ten thousands. That's persecution and population control. We're not going to go into more detail on that. But he, Ptolemy IV, atheistic communism, shall not be strengthened by it, not complete the conquest of Assyria, will not weaken the USA. For the king of the north, Antiochus III, the USA, shall return, shall set forth a multitude greater than the former, start of the fifth Syrian war, the response to atheistic communism, this backlash that is occurring, and shall certainly come after certain years. So this idea of certain years, we've, we've already addressed, um, but I'm just going to go back here. So you're going to have uh, the H6256 occurs at the end of Daniel 11, verse 6, that strengthened her in these times, which was noted as 17 years and 46 days, which gives us the numbers of Capricar's constant. And then November 9th to December 25th is symbolized that, that in unspecified years. And we also noted that. Six times two times five times six is three sixty. And then when it comes to uh, eight one four one, the twenty two years and one hundred five days, we noted that from September eleventh two thousand one to December twenty fifth twenty twenty three is an inclusive count of eight thousand one hundred forty one days. When we consider this this with this other number, both marking December twenty fifth, together they are a period of fourteen thousand three hundred ninety six days. If we include the symbolism from 360, we have a period of 14,757 days, which is the number of days from November 9th, 1989 to April 5th, 2030, right? So that gives us the whole span of this period of time, right? 14,757 days. So, so if we're going to take that as significant, that the start of this fifth Syrian war is as a symbol, and they shall certainly come after certain years with a great, great army, much rich riches. Antiochus the, the third would defeat Ptolemy V at Epiphanes at the Battle of Paneum, driving out of Judea, Palestine once and for all. So this is going to give us, um, we're saying it's, it's dealing with the midnight cry. It's Paneum, but it's going to represent this entire line. And so what did I do there? I think 1475. So I think I did that wrong. So just hang on here. 14757. So if we go from November 9th, yeah. So in, in this diagram that we had done, 
I had actually drawn this out wrong, and I don't know. Oh, I know why. Because I changed some of this stuff. That's why. So I need to move this over here. So this is going to move over, right? This after certain years. You can see that goes there now because I moved that April 5th, 2030 over. I mean, so this is, this is, now, now we had put that then at Caneum because that, that's where we had had it before. But, you know, maybe there's something else that we should, you know, consider. Maybe, maybe what we need to do is where we're going to place this 777 days. Uh, I'm going to do this instead. So I'm going to do this as December 25th, 20. So I think this, this actually, I don't know if this is going to make more sense or not, but I'm going to do it this way. So this is going to be these 777 days. And just for clarity, I'm going to move this one back here. And so we still have this here. We still, we've got the 7777 days there. So what we're, what we're doing here is we're marking this. That's one way we could do it. We could do this. We could just make this November 9. I know I'm moving all this stuff around. I'm just thinking, get rid of that. Put this down here. And then, um, this is going to be the first day, the first month from 24 to 30. And then this is, so this gives us that, that seven, seven, seven days. Now, what this means is that a lot of this de detail that we see in here is this between, uh, the arrival of the second angel is this history here. And when we get to December 25th, 2021, we're saying all those events that is going to be the siege of Washington and all those different things that happen within this movement then end that period of Rafi on December 25th, 2021. Then there is going to be, um, and so this would not be here. This, this would actually be part of this line. So that means what we call Paneum, the fifth Syrian war, is what we're entering into starting um, on April, April 10th, 2024. And that goes to, so I don't know how, how to do that, but I mean, I could even just put like the seven, seven, seven days as one of the way marks. Anyway, you see what I'm doing? Hopefully I'm just saying that we, we have some, some way marks that we zoom into and we find some of this Z detail that's in this line. But, you know, we got the arrival of this, the formalization of the second angel's message is going to be this November 9th, 2019. And its empowerment is December 25th, 2021. And then we have these periods of time, right? So we're going to have this 2,187 days. And that's going to be marking uh, this period of the Sunday law. So I, I don't know if this makes any sense to anyone. We could go back and do what we were doing before. But anyway, thoughts on this. Because we just have so much detail. And the question is, you know, how do we address that detail? I mean, there, there are other ways that we can do this. I mean, we could simply, instead of this 9-11 being here, we could put 11-9 there. So we could do this. Just put the Patriot Act up here and, and put this as 11-9 being in this line, the arrival of the second angel. And then we could put, um, you know, so you're going to have this 777 days up here. And then this would be, maybe this makes more sense. What about that? Because that describes how we have understood this line. Now, then it puts December 25th, 2021 as Paneum. And it puts that Sunday law symbol, uh, there, um, as from the first day of the first month in 2024 to 2030. Any thoughts about this? And then, of course, we have to uh, change this. Well, so now we don't have this April 10th date in there. Or do we? Yes, we do here. 
So this was going to be like that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, now as I'm looking at this, and I'm seeing that we're instead of having the two 911s as we're combining this, is it possible that each of the 911s could actually be indicative of two different lines? One spiritual and one, let's say, of the world? Well, yes. So we already understand that. So that is, we know that we're, what we're doing here is we're trying to combine two lines. Right. Without drawing out two lines. Right. Okay. So, but we're saying that Greece represents this. So under the first angel's message here, this is uh, what is happening sort of in this external line, we might call it, um, you know, 1989, 9-11. And, um, you know, so we have, have those events that tie us to the fall of the Soviet Union, which we're uh, lining up with uh, what happens in the dyadochy wars. Okay. So that's how we're, 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 we're starting the first Syrian war as with the fall of the Soviet Union at its extremity, right? Not the beginning of it. So when it's actually falling, that's going to be the first Syrian war. And then we have 9-11 as the empowerment, which, which we already had, right? Um, in our line, we had it both as the empowerment as the arrival, but here as the arrival of the second angel, we're going to put 11.9. So we know when we're doing that, that this is, you know, this is different than what Jeff did in the sense that they have both 9.11s, but we recognize that 11.9 is 9.11. So, I mean, we still can say here that this is 9.11 because it's the arrival of the second angel, which is Revelation 18. But 11.9 and 9.11 are really the same way, Mark. That is, as we look at the line after we pass this way mark, we could then see that it was 9-11, right? That that is really the arrival of the second angel occurs at 11-9, not, not really 9-11, but 9-11 and 11-9 are tied together, right? They're tied together at their beginnings and their ends. So that 30-year period in there uh, becomes very significant. And then you're going to have... Um, what happens in our history, the 777 days. So that is going to lead us to all of these events that are going to happen. What we would, you know, all of this, the stuff there that's in those verses dealing with Trump and Biden, that's all happening in that history. So you have the pandemic, but here we're, 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 we're not, there's so many different dates that we could place there that, that is, is that they're not really just one specific date. There's a bunch of dates, right? So we could zoom into this arrival of the second angel. And we would actually have that 777 day line uh, because we've done that before. Right. But here in this, we want to do overall what happens to Greece. So we're, we're taking these main way marks. So the January 6th occurs within that 777 days. And we're saying that that's raffia. Now, Obviously, December 25th, 2021, we don't really mark as Paneum. So that would be the weakness of this, though it has a bunch of symbols attached to it. And, and, and there's a bunch of dates that we, we could zoom into this empowerment of the second angel. And we could, we could put a bunch of dates in there, right? That December 25th, 2021 doesn't just stand on its own because we had it in this line of the seven, seven days as a symbol of the Sunday law. So now we have this um, first day of the first month. You know, in some ways it would be nicer to have that there, but then you wouldn't have this line of the seven, seven, seven days there. That's all I'm saying. So, I mean, I almost rather put, you know, I don't, I don't know. You know, I'd rather put actually April 10th, 2024 there as Paneum, as a symbol, rather than December 25th, 2021. But, but there are relationships between that. So, so it's 837 days between December 25th, 2021 and April 10th, 2024. So I don't know if that means anything. I don't know. What should we do with this? 
I mean, should we just kind of not put December 25th, 2021 in there? Just It is important as a waymark. Well, yes, but it, it could just be, you know, we could just put November 9th, 2019 as the start of the 777 days. And, but I'm just saying, you know, how do I connect December 25th to, you know, April 10th? I mean, it's, I don't see any particular connection. 837 days, as far as I can tell, doesn't have any significance uh, as a symbol. Right? The only thing I can think of is uh, the 837 comes like eight times three times seven is 168, and that's enough. 168 BC. Oh, okay. If I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's kind of, okay. So now we got something. So, yes. And, and the other thing is 837 is three times three times three times 31. That if that's the divisors, right? So 27 times 31. And that deals with the week of Christ. So, so I like that. And of course, uh, so. Eight times three times seven, so twenty-one times eight is one sixty-eight. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that, that was that was um, helpful. So, what would we do with that? As far as this chart is concerned. Okay. So we got eight thirty-seven days, and we're just saying that it's uh, three times three times three. So I'm going to put that in here, and it's also eight. Times three times seven equals one sixty-eight. That's going to tie us to this number up here, right? Any other thoughts about this? Uh, the three cubed is 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 a twenty-seven. Yeah, yeah. So it's twenty-seven and thirty-one, you- which are the start of, of the seventy weeks. Thirty-one is the center of the seventy weeks. And the Julian day number for April 10th, 2024 is 2460410. 410, of course, is April 10th. So that's kind of interesting. Now, of course, we, you know, we have this date, April 10th, 2024. It's a future date. And, and we're just saying it's a symbol. So having that, that symbol there, the first day of the first month, it, you know, it, it's, I mean, we don't have to wait till April 10th to know that we're entering into a time in which Paneum occurs, right? So now we're saying December 25th, 2021 is Paneum on this line, which is what I don't like about it. But we, we could say that it's, it's, it's still connected as a symbol. That is, we're connecting all of these things, we're stringing them together in this manner. So we have the 777 days, we have the 837 days, and then we have the, the 2,187 days. And then, you know, that ends that line. You have 187 days, inclusive count to October 8th, 2030, which I just put there as the fourth angel arriving, right? So I don't have it as a, um, as part of this line per se. It's just, there's going to be a repeat of history. So now, again, you know, we have these dates in the future. We're not saying that things are happening on these dates. We're just saying that they're symbolizing events that are still going to happen in the future. Whatever dates they happen on, they happen on. And, and they will have significance. That is, when we, when we have an event happening on a date, it's going to fit into our lines and into our structure. But we, we can't predict uh, what those dates will be on and what events will be connected with them, right? So I think we're agreed upon that idea. But what this does is this preserves everything that we had done with Daniel chapter 11 with Greece. It it, it doesn't show all of the detail in here, right? Because this is the, the broader line. So we could zoom into these different way marks and add some more of that detail. But as a general way in which we had interpreted this line, uh, this fits and it gives us these symbols that line it up with the line above. Now, the other thing, when we look at this, uh, from December 25th, 2021, if you go to the end of that date and you count 777 days, uh, 
you come to this date today. And what is today? Stephen's birthday, right? So note that, that between December 25th, 2021, that is when you get to the end of that date, uh, you're going to come to Stephen's birthday. Now, um, you know, this is, is 2024. He was born in 69. So you can figure out his age there. So he's, he's what, 55 then, right? Today. Um, and then there's an additional 60 days to April 10th, 2024. So we have 777 plus 60 to get that period of time. Now, of course, we would, you know, one, one's an exclusive count and one would be an inclusive count. But anyway, does that make sense? It works. Okay. So, so there's a lot of detail that, that's left out of this line, but it's implied because we can zoom into each of these waymarks and establish these connections. Right. Because, you know, here we don't have, you know, Biden's inauguration on here, but, but that's, that's a way mark. I mean, we have it in other lines, but those lines are a little more detailed. Now, I mean, we could go in and draw all of these other little lines. That is, we could zoom into each of these, but I don't think that we need to because what we're just trying to establish is that what is happening right now in the movement is the end of Greece, right? Now, Greece represents the United Nations because we had already dealt with the United States, right? So we're saying that this is the dragon power that's being described. And, um, you know, so the, the whole idea here is that in this battle, this is a battle in which uh, the, the, it's between the king of the north and the king of the south. But ultimately, who's going to lose this battle? The king of the south. And when the king of the south loses the battle, we see that the king of the north is going to then be subjugated by Rome, right? So that, that's the next line we have to draw, the beginning of Rome. So the end of Greece is the beginning of Rome. But this is ultimately showing the defeat of the king of the south. Within this civil war, the civil war that's represented as occurring within the United States, right? Because this is all about these battles between the North and the South, between these two, two ideas, spiritualism, which is the King of the South, and the United States and the papacy, the King of the North. And it's worked out in this history in the United States. And this movement has a part to play in it, right? That is not so much that we're, we're part of the battle per se, but where we're these observers and we're looking at this prophetically. And so, you know, we have, you know, as, as Dwight was sort of saying, there's a spiritual line and then there's this outside line, you know, and in some ways we could say, well, maybe putting November 9th and December 25th in there is actually taking a spiritual line and putting it in this other line. But we have those way marks in there, right? They, they have, they are connected to what's happening externally. And what's happening externally is this, um, you know, the issues of the pandemic. It's, it's, it's all being worked out. And, and it's a typical line, in a sense, of what's happening on the bigger line. So, so these lines are mixed together. They're, it's impossible to really separate them out 100%. So I, I don't know. You know, obviously the 777 days could be left out, but then, you know, we have this symbol of the 837 days and, and it gives you that, you know, 27 times 31 or 8 times 3 times 7, which is 168. It ties us to that Pidna symbol to what happens with the day of Eleusis, Eleusis which is, you know, in 168. And there we have two dates, really, whenever the day of Eleusis is. It's, it's after the Battle of Pydna. We don't, I don't know the exact date. But it, it gives us this symbol here. Then we have this first day of the first month from 2024 to 2030 as, as a symbol that we put on the line as the Sunday law. It's obviously not the Sunday law because this is a typical line. It's dealing with, with the fall of Greece with the fall of the UN. Now the UN isn't going to be completely gone, but 
in the end, when the UN is part of this threefold union, is the UN the head of that? Why is the UN involved in a threefold union? Why is the Dragon Power united with uh, the United States and the papacy? Why are they? Why are they even there? Why are they just not excluded? So they're going to lose their their place in a sense of what that is what they're wanting. This atheistic communism is not going to take over the world, right? Can we agree on that? Because would atheistic communism bring in a Sunday law? No, no, it, there's no interest in a Sunday law. That's it's a religious thing, right? So so for the world to uh, bring in a Sunday law, it has to, in a sense, fall, right? It has to fall from its principles. But but why is it there in the threefold union then? Is it because of its representation of Egypt or the world? Okay, so the whole world has to wander after the beast, right? Correct. So in this this union, it, it's it's giving up its principles. I mean, obviously, in the hope that it can exert its principles, but they're not going. It's not going to win. So it, and, and they also have a common enemy, of course, right? Because they have God's people as a common enemy. So the world, this secular, humanistic, atheistic, communistic idea, is not the one that's going to be bringing in the Sunday law. It's not going to be the one that ultimately is oppressing God's people in and of itself, right? And, and we saw that when we looked at uh, the World Economic Forum. I mean, they're just a bunch of uh, juvenile philosophers who have no idea what the real world is about. They have this, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, what, what you call it, um, it, their view of the world is is very simplistic. They don't know anything about reality. So they're, they're not going to be, and they can't do anything. I mean, they can organize meetings and, you know, because they're rich, they're elites, and they can talk amongst themselves. But as far as actual action, they, they really can't do too much. And and they're not they're not wise enough to, they're not sly enough to, to fool people. So people eventually see what they are. Now the papacy is different than the, the United States is different. They will, and, it, and the papacy really ultimately pulls the wool over the eyes of everyone. But in this threefold union, we can see that Greece represents the dragon power and its fall. Then we're going to have Rome, right? So Rome is going to represent uh, the beast. Right now here, it's of course pagan Rome that's going to conquer Greece. But pagan Rome and papal Rome are still both Rome, but they each have their own line. We're going to have a line of, of pagan Rome, and then we're going to have a line of papal Rome. And, and it becomes extremely, uh, I mean, there's so much detail in this history as we have gone through it. And we know that we have multiple lines. We, we can see them, but I don't think we need to draw all of them out. I mean, it's just basically is all I'm trying to say right now, right? I, I mean, I because we, we've drawn them out in other stories, in other histories, and and we've drawn them out already. Even even when we were dealing with with Greece, we had a line addressing all of this detail. Now that line we didn't end up uh, putting. So this was our line. Yeah, we, we did put waymarks on it, right? So, so we have this line already dealing with, with Greece, the early part of Greece, right? So, so we do have other lines and, and this line is going to address much more clearly what's happening in this election, right? So this is going to be, I mean, it's going to be marking from the empowerment of the second angel to the arrival of the fourth angel um, with the new president, whoever that happens to be. But that, that line itself, if we were going to zoom into January 20th, 2025, I mean, that's a whole other line that we haven't, we haven't even looked at yet. But that's a repeat of this history. This history is typifying that, that next history. 
Now, in some ways, when we look at this other line that, that we've drawn here, <clears throat> uh, we can see that this line, uh, it doesn't have the date for the, the election in 2024. It doesn't have that. Um, or, you know, the inauguration of the new president in 2025. And, but yet, you know, it's covering that history. So, you know, as symbols. So we, we just don't, there's things in the future still. We, we get symbolic dates. And as we pass through this history, we might be able to, you know, flesh out these things a little bit more. But at this present time, I think that this, this solves this line that we have for Greece. So as a symbol, October 8th, 2030, uh, it's, it's going to symbolize that repeat of history in which we're in now, right? The fourth angel arriving. That's the history we are in. And so it's going to symbolize that, whatever, whatever that is. But we're not in that history yet. We're still in the repeat of Millerite history, right? In this, in this way. But we know that our repeat of history is typifying what's going to happen. Any other thoughts about this line? Now, one of the things that we looked at when we got to the Fifth Syrian War, so I'm going to go back here, on this civil war from the first day of the first month in 2024 to the first day of the first month in 2030, right? That's what we're saying in those times during the Fifth Syrian War. Republicanism in the United States will stand up, make war, propaganda against the King of the South, against Biden or the Democrats. And then it says, also the robbers of uh, thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. Now, there was a whole bunch in this that we noticed. So first we noticed that this is the papacy coming in. So uh, what we would expect is that the papacy is in, in this history. So when we look at this from uh, the beginning of Rome, we can see how it has a role. That goes back to the earlier history, right? 1989 and all those things happening in the past. But also it shows the end because the end and the beginning are connected. And then we looked at this, this idea of, uh, the vision itself, the Kazone from 723 BC to 1798. It represents the two desolating powers, 1989 to the Sunday law. But they shall fall right now. The thing about this number two, three, seven, seven, um, it combines the symbols of the 2300 days and the seven times with the two sevens and even the 70 weeks. 2377 days is six years and 186 days. Now, so we need to keep that in mind when we go back to this diagram. Right. So six years and 186 days. Now, here, what do we have from the first day of the first month in 2024 to the first day of the first month in 2030? What do we have? How many years? Well, it's six years. And then to October 8th, 2030, it's 187 days, right? So if we take this um, H23, Seven seven, it's six years and 187 days. Now it's not exactly, um, and so this is counting from obviously the first day of the first month in 2024. Now it's not exactly that many days because the six years is not solar years, right? So this, it's six solar years, but, but we can understand that Six years is six years as a symbol. And then from the first day of the first month to the 10th day, the seventh month is 187 days. So this connects us then from this first day of the first month in 2024 to the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030. So I'll just put here. So, all right, so you got the vision. So Rome exalts itself to establish the vision, right? So we can see how that fits. So we got Raphia, we got December 25th, 
here representing the start of Paneum, the start of the Fifth Syrian War, in which Paneum occurs. And then we have this first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, six years, and then 187 days. So Rome exalts itself to establish the vision. Okay, any questions on this? Also you got the uh, Shazam, uh, the bottom right there. Yeah, yeah. So the H2377, six years and 187 days. You just divide it by um, 365.25. It gives us six years and 187 days. Shazam, is that the vision, Shazam? Is that- yeah, that's the vision. Yeah. Okay, all right. Rome exalts itself to establish the vision. Yeah, okay. So, um, and so again, 2377, seven, I'm just checking my math. Now, I said it, it, it's actually, it's not really 187 days, it's 186 days, which is, of course, the actual cardinal days. So I'm doing it, when I said it's 187 days, that's an inclusive count. But uh, anyway, that's where it, it brings us to as a symbol. But I think I'll just keep it as 100. Well, I'll put it as 186. Just more precise. <clears throat> it looks like it seems to line up pretty good. Yeah, I know. Yeah, January 6th with Rafi. I think that almost nails that up to that part. <laughs> well, you know, and that, I mean, the thing is we're putting Rafi there. I mean, we could have said, well, you know, all of that stuff dealing with this internal Rafi is not really the issue, right? But but this is in this line, because remember, we're not at midnight yet. And as far as I understand, all of this is still leading up to midnight on the line that Jeff had, right? 9-11, midnight, midnight cry, Sunday law. We haven't reached midnight yet. So we haven't reached the actual Rafia. But here we're addressing Greece, Right. So Greece, I mean, it's illustrating our history, but it's illustrating our history within this present tense of what this movement has already established. When we looked at the book of Judges, we kept coming to our history. Now, uh, the book of Judges primarily dealt up to 2023 and then just as a symbol had this date, April 5th, 2030, kept being witness to it, you know, often as the fourth angel arriving. But here we have. You know, clearly, uh, uh, all of these symbols. So obviously, after certain years, uh, you know, leading us to April 5th, 2030. So, so this one's going to lead us to, just to make clear, uh, this one here, uh, this is going to lead us this 6256. I've got to do this again. I want to make sure I do this right. <clears throat> Um, because that was a period of, it's like 22 years, and so we got, it's 8,248 days. And if I count, so you count from September 11th, yeah, it brings us as an inclusive count to April 10th, 2024, right? So I guess the thing in this line, just to make it clear, we do something like this. And this one's going to end up being 2030. So, you know, that's like 40 years and a bit. So you can see it's going, we, we need to have these, this date marked April 10th, 2024 needs to be marked. April 5th, 2030 needs to be marked because of these symbols in these verses. Right. So the 6256 and the 1992, right, that's going to be that phrase, you know, after certain years was that longer one and then it was, in the, and in those times, in those times, which is during the Fifth Syrian War. So we're going to mark in those times as starting the Fifth Syrian War on the first day of the first month in 2024. And then we have the 2,187 days to April 5th, 2030. I don't know what all this means. Um, we have this number many. So I just say many goes from uh, from June 22nd, 2010 to April 5th, 2030, we counted 7,227 days. So June 22nd, 2010. Um, then I have all this 1533 minus 
622 equals 911. So it just shows the symbol of 622. And then I show, of course, that um, if you take that and you add it to to that number, you get 15475, which if you subtract 14757, seven, you get 718, which is a symbol of July 18th. So, so it just shows that this is all connected to this these symbols. Okay, so yeah, so Aran, what you're asking. So Aran's asking a question. So obviously, if we counted the number of days from April 10th, 2024, to April 5th, 2030, it's going to be five days left. It's going to be, or less, it's going to be two, three, uh, seven, two days, right? So when I, I say that Kazone represents six years, I'm not actually counting the number of days, right? So I'm not counting from, I'm just counting as a symbol from the first day of the first month. So that's addressing this here. So because if you're going from uh, April 5th, well, April 10th, 2024, to April 5th, 2030, that's going to be five days less than six years, right? And then you count this 186 days. That's going to give you 2372, not 2377. But I'm just saying that it represents six years and 186 days. And so from the first day of the first month, does that make sense? Does that help, Aran? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just using the symbol of six years, but not actually counting out that number exactly. But it is six years, right? The first day of the first month, the first day of the first month is six years. And then you have 186 days, which brings you to the 10th day of the seventh month. You count from the first day of the first month, cardinal count is 186 days. So, so this 2377, it also, remember, it gives us the 2300 days symbol. And remember, there's 2300 months from the first day of the first month in 1844 to the first day of the first month in 2030. And then with the 77, it gives us the symbol of the 777 structure, but also the 70 weeks, right? 70 times 7, right? You can see the 70 in there and the 7. So it gives us the 70 weeks and the 2300 days, which then is, is tied to Millerite history through these 2300 months. And then we have this other further 186 days. So that's why October 8th, uh, the 10th day of the seventh month in 2030 becomes important. If you think about it, you know, you have the first day of the first month in, well, another way to look at it, there's 2,300 months from October 22nd, 1844 to October 8th, 2030, right? Because if there's 2,300 months from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, then there's 2,300 months from the 10th day of the seventh month to the 10th day of the seventh month. So, so we can see that, that both of those dates become significant. The, the start of that, that period of time the first way mark, which we mark as November 9th, or know, September 11th as a way mark, it's the first day of the first month. And then to the Sunday law, that's the 10th day of the seventh month. So that is illustrated in this history here. Now we have this uh, paneum up there, right? You know, and we're marking paneum with December 25th. This this would me to be the thing that, you know, because we, we've had we've passed this date. And we didn't really mark it as paneum. But in some ways in our lines, we were saying that um, that there would be a connection between because originally we had Raffia as 11-9, right? And July 18, 2020 as Paneum, right? That's That was kind of the idea that was first put out there once we had Raffia as, you know, that's what they were saying, you know. Tess and, and, and others, you know, we put Raffia there. And so we tried to, to address that. And then we, then we kind of move them over. We moved, well, you know, maybe we move over uh, Raffia to July 18th. We kept trying to, to figure this out. And part of the problem is we just had different lines, but, you know, we came to understand that January 6, 2021 is Raffia. That is the King of the South defeats the King of the North. Now, if December 25th, 2021, is Paneum. Well, we don't really see that the King of the North is defeating the King of the 
south on that day. Nothing really happens. So this would be a weakness in this line, which is why, you know, I'd much rather have April, you know, April 10th, 2024 there. But then we do have this symbol of the 837 days and, and what it yields, you know, the three times three times three times 31 or 27 times 31. It gives us part of that week of Christ from, to, from his baptism to his crucifixion. We have 168, which symbols symbolizes a week, the number of hours in a week. And it also symbolizes Pidna and the day of Eleusis. So, so there are symbols definitely that are there, but we don't really know. I mean, Paneum is, I mean, we're entering into this, this turnaround now. I mean, you wouldn't really have seen this so much on December 25th, 2021. I mean, you don't see Democrats turning against Biden. You don't see a weakening of wokeism, but you do see it now. And, and so maybe it just represents that period of time prior to Paneum. So the December 25th. So, I mean, maybe we could have placed, you know, Dece- April uh, 10th there, December 25th, 2021 to April 10th. So, well, let, let's try that. Okay. So if we did this to, um, what was April 10th again? It's the first day of the first month. Okay. Right. Okay. So it's, it, and it, it, it's just the number of days. If we take the, these numbers here in those times, right? So this is the word times. I probably should have them switched around. So that's, that's the phrase in those times. That's going to bring us to April 10th, 2024. Right. So all of this would simply be uh, attached to this period of 187 days. So this, this is, you know, do it this way. I know it's a lot of stuff there, but okay. And then we have this 2187 days would just go here. Okay, so we got this 2187 days here. This is obviously just going to be April 5th, 2030. And then we would put this zone here is going to be symbolized by this. So it's kind of getting a little messy, but let's put it like that. Okay. I know it's got lines through it, but what do we think of that? Does that make a bit more sense to combine those two dates? Just saying that we have from the end of that 777 days, we have now, now what this is doing then is it's putting Paneum as this period of time from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, six years. It's a six year period. Now, the thing about a six year period is it's, if we did it in prophetic time, it's, uh, you know, six times 360, it would give us 2,160 as, as a symbol, right? Which is 216 is six times six times six. So it would lead us to, to, you know, the symbol of the su- Sunday law. Now we're saying it's 2,187 days in actuality, but in prophetic time, if we just take uh, six prophetic years, it'd be two one six zero. So we so we have two different symbols that six years can give us. We can look at the actual number of days between the first day of the first month and the first day of the first month, or we can look at it as a prophetic symbol two one six zero. We can also just take it as you know six years. Um, you know, it's definitely not six solar years because it's five days short. Does that make sense? So we got that symbol attached to it as well, 2160. So if I take um, 6 times 360, yeah, so it's 6 years and 27, right, if we put it into, and the 627 then becomes a symbol as well. What is the 627? So Rand put that in there. 6 years and 27 prophetic days equals 2187. And what's 627? 
Well, we could look at it as 276. It's the number of people on the boat, if you count the 273 plus the three. Um, 62 weeks? You have to explain that one. That's just, just another way of writing the 627. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, so 62, 7, yeah. Uh, we got 627 BC. 627 BC is the end of, well, that's the fulfillment of the prophecy of Josiah, starting in, in 977. So, so it ends up ending 350 years later, from which you count 40 years, right? So, um, you know, it shows up in lots of different ways. June 27th in Millerite history, the publication of the document that was um, connected to Pentecost, 622. He writes his four, uh, the third um, article, Samuel Snow does, and then it's published. So it's written on June 22nd. It's published June 27th. We also have June 27th in our history, 1260 days from when Aeneum is first presented. And then that's going to be 21 days to July 18th. So June 27th shows up as a symbol. So I, to me, I'm fairly satisfied with this. I, I think it puts together that, that 777 days, that it's showing that um, once we get to the end of the 777 days, it's we have this 837 days that brings us to the symbol that is going to mark the start of the meeting. Not that date, so we're not saying on that date, but it marks that start of Paneum. And then we have the 2,187 days to April 5th, 2030, right? And it has all of these symbols attached to, to it as well. And then we have the fourth angel arriving, the 10th day of the seventh month. And that's just from the word, uh, Rome exalts itself to establish the vision. So it's pointing to something in the future that with the symbolic date, we're not saying that that's the Sunday law or anything like that. It's just a symbol. And that the certain years and in these times, um, all of these symbols that we had found, they all fit into this structure here. Okay. And any other thoughts before we close? I know it's a lot of information here, but we've gone through a lot of this before. And it speaks to our what? Okay. I don't remember the lining up with the Syrian Syrian wars. I don't remember seeing that. No, well we just started doing that. So lining yeah. it up with the Syrian wars was just this last week. We started looking at that. Right. But I mean we sort of had, but we just hadn't done it in that specific way. But it was implied. Because yeah. when we yeah. threw Greece, I mean, it's dealing with these battles between the king of the north and the king of the south, and that's what these wars are, right? So we're just calling them the Syrian wars because that's what they call them. But we already had these dates. We, we had Raphael, we had Paneum, we had uh, four, 246, we had 252, we had the first Syrian war, 271, all of these different symbols. And, and then we could see how the Diadochi wars uh, compared to the fall of the Soviet Union right, from that period of 777 days. So to me, it, it the structure fits with what, what we have with the Syrian wars. But so that's in the Book of Daniel. They just don't, we don't just usually call them that, right? There's, there's certain battles that are connected with each of those wars or certain events that, that we talked about and we have the dates for them, but we just didn't say, well, that's in the second Syrian war, like 252 is the BC is the end of the Second Syrian War. Third Syrian War starts in 246. And that's going to be, I believe, the King of the South defeating, I can't remember which one wins. But anyway, I, I think, and for me, it's okay, right? You know, I want to start, you know, looking at Rome and drawing out their line. But we spend a lot of time with Greece, and and we, we've spent time with Rome already, we just need to draw the line of Rome. Well, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness and love and um, ask that you can um, be with us throughout this day and the time that we study. Help us in all the things that we need to accomplish. And um, 
Forgive us for our sins and help us to trust in you. Bless each person. May your angels watch over them and our loved ones and those we come in contact with. May we have an influence for good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.